Welcome to worship at Northwoods Presbyterian Church. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. We gather together this morning to worship the God of love, to give thanks to God for that gift of love and the gift of other people who pour that love out on us, especially our mothers. So happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning, and we hope that you feel and know that you are loved. We are so grateful for the many ways that you all are supporting our church and our ministry. The gifts that you are giving allow us to continue a strong ministry with our church family, our community, and even out into the world. Last week, we shared that we have begun our annual offering for, the, for NAM's SOS Food Drive. This is an offering we take every year to support this local ministry to provide much needed food for children and families, for the elderly, and all those in need. If you would like to support that offering or give to the church, you can do so by going to our website, northwoods.org, and clicking on the Give button at the top of the page and designate your giving there or you can mail your checks into the church. We continue to offer different um, classes and activities through Zoom this week. All the information for those can be found on our Facebook page under the events tab. So we hope you'll take a look at those and join us. We'd love to see you in some of those this week. Friends, let us worship the Lord our God with this hymn of grateful praise. Oh 
Thank you to our choir. That was beautiful. Now it is time for our children and our youth to sit a little closer, pay attention. This is for you. Way back in the olden days, when I was a little girl, there was something called books on tape. Now you may be asking yourself, how did a book get onto these things called tapes? Well, people would read the stories and you'd put your cassette tape in your player and you press play, someone would read the story and every time it was time to turn the page, a little bell would ding. You may be asking yourself, Chelsea, why are you telling us about the olden days before podcasts? Well, I'll tell you. Pastor Paul is going to be preaching on how we love each other. He's going to be helping us to remember how important it is that we are Christ's hands and feet by how we love each other. And when I was a little girl, the best way that someone showed me love was my Grandma Allen. She bought this book, Tale of Peter Rabbit, and she read every single page into a, ta a tape recorder. She pressed a little bell every time it was time to turn the page. And so even though she lived far away, at bedtime, whenever I wanted to hear my grandma read me a story, my mom would give me the book and she would tuck me in and then she'd press play on the tape recorder. And I could listen to my grandma's voice as she read me a story, reminding me that I wasn't alone and that I was loved. That is an example of how we can love each other. This week, I'd love for you to think about the people in your life. How can you show them love? Maybe it's a kind word or helping with the dishes, or maybe it's just thinking about someone and praying for them before you go to bed. But this week, let's all work a little harder to love the way that Christ loves us. At this time, we would love it for you to pass the peace. Start by passing the peace with everybody in your living room, and then send a text message to someone in our congregation. Tell them you're thinking about them. And don't forget to comment on our Facebook page so that we know you're watching with us. We love you all, and we miss you desperately. He's got the whole
Let us pray. God of grace and love, we thank you for the gift of family, for parents, children, and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, for church family and community, and all the ways you draw us together and give us love through each other. On this Mother's Day, we lift before you our families in all their complexity, joys, and struggles. We know this day is full of mixed emotions, and this year feels even more complicated with so many of us being separated from those we love. And so we draw close to you, mighty God, in prayer for families. We ask for your guidance as we make decisions about who to see, when, and where. We pray for peace and comfort for all those who are struggling. We pray for health and wholeness. We give you thanks for mothers everywhere. We give thanks for their love, care, and compassion, for the love they live out as they create our homes, care for our needs, and assure us that we are loved. And we ask your blessings on all those who have struggled in their role as mothers, where the path has not been smooth. For those unable to have their own children, fill their hearts with your love. For those who have experienced loss through a pregnancy, the death of a child or a mother, may you give comfort in the midst of great pain. We pray for those who have been faced with difficult decisions for their children, those who are separated from their children, those who left danger, those who struggle financially to provide for their families. We pray for those left brokenhearted by a parent or a child. For those for whom today is difficult, great God, May your spirit hold them tenderly in the strength of your grace and love. I invite you in the quiet of this moment to lift in prayer what is on your heart this day. Mighty loving God, we give you thanks that your spirit is as near as our own breath that you are there with us in the joyous times and in our struggles. And we lift all these prayers in the name of your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your glory. 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare your our living hope your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence lord Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Beautiful. We are so glad that you've joined us this day. These are interesting times, aren't they? And uh, as I get started, I want to give a big shout out to our staff team. You know, we are all trying to minister in this new season and trying to do the best we can to connect with each other. And so besides these Facebook Live services, we're trying to offer daily devotionals and videos and online classes, uh, answer question times. We're just trying to figure out ways that we can keep 
connected, and it is so great being on a staff where people are looking for ways to help connect with people. We're trying to call through our entire membership directory, especially giving attention to people that maybe we hadn't seen even prior to this season. So uh, thank you, staff, for all that you're doing in helping to minister to our congregation. And to the congregation, I want to say thank you as well. Uh, the cards, the texts, the emails of uh, appreciation and support mean a great deal. So we're currently in a sermon series on the letter of James, and James is helping us to walk our talk and is concerned especially when he sees a disconnect between faith in Jesus Christ and how that is lived out in actions. You know, really the heart of James's letter is faith without works is dead. And so he is trying to show us opportunities where maybe we see a disconnect between our faith and belief and our actions. So today, James points to a problem that he saw. He saw that people, uh, even in the church, uh, had their favorites. And so he writes the following. James chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Listen for God's word for you this day. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For a person, for if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Then continuing in verse 8. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are thankful for your presence with us this day. And we pray for our openness to receive your touch, your word in our lives. Lord, we don't want to just go through the motions but believe you have a word for each of us. So free us from those things that may be clouding our minds so that we can hear your word tailor-made for us this day. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, someone put together some tweets about Mother's Day in this age of the coronavirus and social distancing. Here's one of them. I'm not sure what my husband is planning on doing for me on Mother's Day, but I hope it's the laundry. Gentlemen, heads up. Your kids aren't coming home from school with that cute handmade Mother's Day gift this year. That's on you. Get out the glue. Here's another one. If it's not a secret underground bunker with a strong Wi-Fi connection and a drop box for food and wine deliveries, I don't want it for Mother's Day. Here's another one. Quarantine for Mother's Day and get out of lockdown just in time for Father's Day figures. And the last one. All I want for Mother's Day is to sleep for nine straight hours, wake up to the sound of coffee brewing, and then have my husband say things like, I'm going to entertain the kids all day so you can sit on the couch in your PJs and buy your Mother's Day gift in peace. These are definitely crazy times, aren't they? And these crazy times bring out crazy. Now, I don't know if it's because we're all experiencing cabin fever, but I feel like I just got my license and I'm trying to run errands, any errands that I possibly could do, like, do you need me to go pick up food or do you need something from Home Depot or should I turn the car on and drive it around the neighborhood just to make sure the battery doesn't go dead? 
But unfortunately, crazy times also brings out more crazy. What happened to our motto that we're all in this together? Now it seems like the motto has changed to, I'm going to do whatever I want to, no matter who's telling me what. For instance, I don't care what the healthcare leaders say about social distancing. I don't care necessarily what the president, uh, president own, his own guidelines say. Should we open back up? Should we continue to practice social distancing? People are literally physically fighting in stores about whether or not businesses can require people to wear masks. And what's interesting is each state is handling it differently. For instance, now in Texas, we can get haircuts, but in Louisiana, you can't. In Georgia, you can go to the gym, but not here in Texas yet. It reminds me of the children of Israel mentioned in the book of Judges. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. Now, what's interesting is James is concerned about people playing favorites. And I knew I was preaching on this, and I have to say, there have been a, a number of high-profile news accounts about this issue. Did you hear about the salon owner up in the Dallas area? And she was saying that she was going to open up her salon even before what the governor and the uh, county instructed in orders to them. She said that she actually opened up on April 24th despite the state's and county stay-at-home orders. She received a cease and desist letter from a Dallas County judge that ordered her to close her salon, but she publicly ripped it up in protest. She told CBS that she's against the safer at home order due to financial reasons. She said, our salon and other small businesses were closed down on March 22nd and we have not had any income since. At that time, she was arrested for defying the orders. She would still try to, and even though she told them she would still try to keep it open, she said, it's our right to keep the store open. It's our right for those women to earn income for their families. Well, how would you respond if you were the judge? Well, on Tuesday, May 5th, Luther was sentenced to seven days in jail and fined $7,000. Dallas County Judge Eric Moy found Luther to be criminally and civilly in contempt of court and said that reopening her salon was a selfish act. The judge told Luther that she could avoid jail time if she closed the salon and apologized for her actions, what would you have done if you were in her situation? Here's her response. Luther responded that she could not comply with the orders and would not apologize. She said, I have to disagree with you, sir, when you say that I'm selfish because feeding my kids is not selfish. So, sir, if you think the law is more important than kids getting fed, then please go ahead with your decision, but I'm not going to shut the salon. Woo! As you might imagine, some people thought her uh, speech was awesome, especially if you support the idea of trying to open up the economy again. But others questioned it. In fact, said that this just shows that if you are privileged, if you have money, you're not playing on the same playing field. If another person did this that happened to be maybe of a different race or a different faith, what would have happened to them? 
Interesting enough, someone started a fundraiser for her and literally raised over a half million dollars. A half million dollars. Even Governor Abbott has backed off it and taken away the confinement as punishment. Would she have received any different sort of response if she maybe was someone of another race or another faith? Hold that in one side of your mind and then think about this of what's taking place in Georgia at the same time. Literally, just recently, people were arrested for a a man who was shot after just running, unarmed, unarmed black man was running in Georgia, and for two months there was no arrest. But just recently, there was an arrest. And in fact, the Glynn County Jail Agency said the following statement, I'm very comfortable telling you there's more than sufficient probable probable cause in this case for felony murder. See, there was public outcry after the video was released and reports that uh, there were no arrests after two months this young man was killed. An attorney for the mother said the following shooting is a modern-day lynching in the middle of the day. Judges 21-25 says, In those days Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. Let's look back at James's words. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? Do we treat each other the same or do we play favorites? Do we play favorites? Eugene Peterson writes, My dear friends, don't let public opinion influence how you live out your glorious Christ-originated faith. If a man enters your church wearing an expensive suit and a street person wearing rags comes in right after him and you say to the man in the suit, sit here, sir, this is the best seat in the house, and either ignore the street person or say, better sit here in the back row, Haven't you segregated God's children and proved that you are judges who can't be trusted? James is calling us to live out our faith with our actions. And eventually he comes around to saying what we should do is practice. Practice the the rule that is in scripture. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. What would our world look like? Our culture, our society, our churches, our communities, what would they look like if all of us really practiced you shall love your neighbor as yourself? Talk to your neighbor as you want them to talk to you. Argue with your neighbor as you would want your neighbor to argue with you. Listen to your neighbor as you would want your neighbor to listen to you. Criticize your neighbor as you would want your neighbor to criticize you our world would look different. I don't know what the answers are, especially to when we should open and keeping socially distant. Those are tough decisions. If you're like me, I have no idea about what's going to be taking place in just a couple weeks or a month or whether or not this virus is going to come back in a second wave. We don't know those answers. I do want us to err on the side of safety, 
But I also understand the challenges of people trying to provide for their families. We're in uncharted territory. And instead of shouting and fighting and doing things that are only going to make the situation worse, we should be looking at ways of how we can help one another during these very challenging times. Yesterday, little Richard passed away, and I was looking at uh, some of his life and came across some interesting quotes. I never accepted the idea that I had to be guided by some pattern or blueprint, he said. And I'd like to give my love to everybody and let them know that the grass may look greener on the other side, but, but, but believe me, it's just as hard to cut. He also said, greed has taken the whole universe, and nobody is worried about their soul. I think people who don't believe in God are crazy. How can you say there is no God when you hear the birds singing these beautiful songs you didn't make? And finally, I also think that what's wrong with all of us is that we don't show enough love toward each other. I think James would agree. We are here to practice. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I do believe that would answer a lot of challenges that we face in our society. It would help us to, to take pause and think about things from a little different perspective. It's not a perfect rule. There's a story about a man and wife who were celebrating their 50th golden wedding anniversary. And after a day of a lot of celebration, they retired back to their home. And before going to bed, they decided to have a little tea and little bread and butter. So the husband went and got a new loaf and handed his wife the heel of the bread. Well... The wife had it. She said, even on my 50th wedding anniversary, you give me the heel of the bread and you don't even care what I like. And she just laid into him. The husband was astonished. And when she had finished, he said the following, but it's my favorite piece of the loaf. Friends, sometimes we have to show our love towards other people in tangible ways. On this day when we celebrate mothers and we are mindful of the way that they shared unconditional love with us and would do anything to protect us. I read story after stories what mothers would do, taking on wild animals, uh, picking up their children and jumping off houses that are burning just to save their children. Sacrificial love. And James is saying it's that sort of love that we should have not only with those in our own family, but with our neighbor. And Jesus was clear when he said anyone in need is our neighbor. At the end of last year, there was an incident that took place on a London subway. A so-called religious man was reading his Bible to a father and son who were Jewish. They were wearing the traditional skull cap. And the man was reading from Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. The man pointed directly to the man and boy as he said the words, synagogue of Satan. Another passenger could be seen in a video walking up to the man who was reading and 
trying to get him to stop, but the man with the Bible could be heard threatening to assault him, saying that he was no Christian pastor who considered himself above such violence. Happened to be a Muslim woman wearing a red hijab and in the video could be seen speaking to the man, weren't exactly sure exactly what she said, but you could tell that she was telling the man something and it was frustrating the man with the Bible. He could be heard saying that the family were imposters, trying to claim his heritage, and then mentioned the slave trade. Well, the video went viral and attracted much attention. And it came to find out that the woman who helped protect the Jewish family was Muslim. The Muslim lady went to the defense of a Jewish father and son. And the video went viral because it gave hope in this fragmented society. One person said, let's try and find out who she is so we can thank her for her wonderful courage and support for giving us renewed hope for the future of our wonderful country. And they found out her name was Shukwe. Eventually, she was interviewed on the BBC, and she said the following, Being a mother of two, I know what it's like to be in that situation. I would want someone to help if I was in that situation. When he started talking to the child, I thought, no, I have to say something. As a mother of two, it's appalling. I can't sit back and watch it happen. People commented that they believed it was, and, oh, and, and of, her, of her comments, saying she believed it was her duty as an observant Muslim and as a citizen of the United Kingdom to speak up when confronted with injustice. Friends, I think James would say she was trying to live out that scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I want to just close with a little comment about my mom. You heard me over the last couple weeks share some of the challenge it has been to communicate with her and this week was her 90th birthday, and her workers at her assisted living center went over and beyond the call of duty. They actually arranged for me to FaceTime with her, so it was the first time I was able to see her for months. But again, I was thinking to myself, you know those workers at her assisted living center? They're doing what? James writes about, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Will you pray with me? Lord, we are grateful for people who live out that wonderful principle you've given us. To, uh, to love others as we want to be loved. Lord, help us to do that in our communities, in our homes, in our churches, in our nation. Help our beliefs to be lived out in our actions. We pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give
thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks. For our benediction today, I'm going to share with you a very important chapter in 1 Corinthians. We call it the love song or the love chapter. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Here's the definition of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these, the greatest of these is love. Amen.